watching um, a lot of South Park. I've been getting uh, a lot of commercials on Hulu. I usually don't watch uh, TV, so I never see commercials. But right. I got a commercial last night for um, uh, Facebook. Oh, and it was what? just a com- Yeah, it was just a commercial that was like, Facebook is working really hard to get the internet all over the world, <laughs> and we're making these planes, <gasps> oh, yeah, and, and the I planes are going to fly around. Yeah, the drone, the internet drones, yeah. I'm yeah, the sorry. internet drones. I'm sorry, re-explain this concept. Internet, Facebook <laughs> drones, commercial for you. <laughs> yeah, so so there's a Facebook commercial that's just like, hey guys, good news. Um, the world doesn't have a lot of internet, but we're, we made these drone planes, um, and they're going to fly around the world, and everyone's going to have internet. And it says Facebook all over them. <laughs> and then at the, at the end of the commercial, they have a song that's playing, and then it like swells at the end. It's like, oh, oh yeah, it's that like song. Some, I know exactly some, what song just, it is. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's something like that. I'm not sure which one. One, but it's, it's yeah, interchangeable oh song yeah imagine yeah, 21 dragons yeah. yeah 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 so mm-hmm. what i what i what i want to conclude here is that indie music is the music of evil corporations <laughs> <laughs> right well there's yeah. a few it's things like, uh, throw that on the end people will feel good about this this commercial isn't for anything except for you to like facebook more <laughs> well, well there's a there's a few things there and and while i would like to talk about the fact that internet drones in third world countries is a terrible idea I yeah. do think I have been noticing like you hear like a, an indie or a pop song and as soon as it comes out, you instantly can guess what product it's going to be like attached to in a commercial. Right. Like mm-hmm. one movie trailer, like imagine dragons just been doing trailers. Right. Right. There, yeah. There's, there's one from like finger 11. Remember, remember finger 11. There's oh, like I a, remember that. There's yeah. like a new song that's like, as soon as I heard it, it went that song's in a goddamn coffee commercial. I just no. know it. Finger like, Eleven yeah. song I feel like is like an army. No, you know what's an army commercial? Three Doors Down went exclusively yes. army commercials. Oh yeah, no, this is the thing. You'd think Finger Eleven would be an army commercial. That's now what it's I like, thought. Yeah. Now it's like the guy from Finger Eleven's got to sing a song about it, like Daddy loves mommy and Baba loves him, and we start the day all over again. <laughs> and you're like, yep, I can just see a, a woman drinking a cup of coffee in a very nice kitchen nook on TV, mm-hmm. and that's the commercial. Got it. Good job, Finger Eleven. <laughs> it's, it's funny you mentioned drones not working in like third world countries. Drones won't work in some parts of Philadelphia because people are going to take them out. And like throw rocks at them. They can't have Amazon drones here because like people will just knock them out of the sky and take the shit and run. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you are living in a third world world country and you see the Facebook internet drone, <laughs> sure it brings the internet, but wouldn't it be really awesome to knock that drone out of the sky? <laughs> <laughs> I would do it right now. If there was one in LA, I would take it out. If it's like. I'm trying to think of like a cool. If it's like, <laughs> I, like the ch- I would imagine Chad. I can imagine you driving around in your car trying to take out drones well you know what it'll be what, what, what would you use to knock them out of the sky uh, Chad? i'm gonna use an old bb gun here's what it's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> cut to the, the neo future i'm 70 i have half a robot body sure and I, I get constant calls from the police to my apartment they're like sir you have to stop sitting on the roof and shooting down the drones we're trying to have a society here and i'm like i don't care they're listening to my conversations i don't care and i'm just sh- like sir you have to sir stop they're them making it so you have internet they're literally sending things to you <laughs> for free god damn it he bought the he bought the cannon from american gladiators off ebay <laughs> he bought he's, shooting, cannon. he's shooting tennis balls at it i have he bought the drone ISIS deliver cannon. it i have the drone deliver it and i immediately shoot it down as it leaves so no survivors i say you should have learned your lesson <laughs> that's perfect You're, though that's a perfect setup order things just to, just to take out the drones that's good and get a oh. free drone then you're getting your thing and a drone Right, yeah, you slowly start to build my own drones to counter the other drones. Then and you I realize, can be the Amazon, Chad. Uh, I realize I'm the monster. I'm real scared about that future. Uh, uh, well, Dom, do you want to talk about that? Talk about that idea. Uh, you and I. Welcome to Paranoia Watch, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, Before some, we get into anything, so we should introduce our guest. Yes, yes, please, uh, Luke. Please introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. My name is Luke, also known as Youngtown on the interwebs, and. I get to hang out with these handsome men today. Thank you for having me on. Oh, Hello. Course, we are honored oh, to thank have you. For you. Coming on. Uh, uh, Luke is a, a real, real solid man who has got positive energy, and we're going to bring it down with these anti-government yes. rants. Uh, I appreciate that. That's very <laughs> we nice. ta- we're, we're not talking about goosebump books at all. We're just talking about this. So, 
I, I just want to point this out. I want to see what what Paul and Luke what you what you think of. In, Is this a conspiracy this. theory? Well, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's an observation. Uh, Dom, if you don't want to bring this we're up, we're pretty sure the inter- we're pretty sure the NSA has my dick pics. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty sure the NSA has, has Dom's dick pic because again, Dom has two dicks, so you got to see all of that. It's a weird, crazy thing, but. Like we are both experiencing, I'll just say me. I don't want Paul, Dom to go on a list more than anything. I am experiencing like, tell, like where I will go. Oh, um, you know, I think I'm going to go pick up that X Men book, uh, X Men 123, and then I'll go to my Google and I'll start uh-huh. to type in X Men, but I'll get to the X and then the M, and then it auto fills 123. That's terrifying. Like the phone is listening clearly. Yes. Right. Wow. I think you might be right. Is, are you guys experiencing uh, I, that I at remember, all? I remember I was at um, a sushi place, and uh, I guess Instagram. Um, I don't remember turning it on, but it must have gotten turned back on uh, after an update or something. Uh-huh. But they had my location, and um, I was at a sushi place, and I was scrolling through Instagram waiting for my sushi, and it was like Kiri Nichiban. Uh, ale, have one. It's good. <laughs> it's like, wait, what the hell? Like, how does it know Yo. that I'm at a freaking sushi place? And sure enough, just they I've realized crazy that the, shit now. Uh, they listen to you. The, the apps will listen yeah. to your conversations, yeah. and then they'll put up ads about what you're talking about. Do well, never you, say anything on Facebook <laughs> Messenger. Never honestly. say anything ever, anywhere. Never. Yeah, we're in fact. We're, wow. we're screwing this over. <laughs> well, yeah, wow. that- this this is not good post coffee talk because you get the caffeine <laughs> going and it increases the paranoia by a million. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You got like five conspiracy theories a brewing right now. This is oh, not yeah, a chill totally. podcast in any way. This is all terror. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing's like a cold cup of truth. Well, so ha- so how do we counter? How do we counter this? Let's be. Pro, I don't know. Let's be. It's just a radio. We became a radio show on Sirius XM. This is politics. bright bar. This is a production of Bright Bar. <laughs> well, first step, first step to countering it is not talking about our counter attack with the phones in sight, which okay. I mine is. Well, I'll just oh. do this that way because I think this is I think this is foolproof, and this is realize how crazy I've gotten. I've been I've started putting my phone when I get home in the other room, like uh-huh. it, like it, like it did something bad. Have like you I done go, any te- <laughs> have you done a test wow. yet? Wow. Well, what do you what do you mean like a, like a li- like a live a life where I don't have the phone for a week? <laughs> yeah, or like a like maybe like like say a thing and then do a Google I in did, relation to it I and did, then do it yeah. where you say it in the other room and then go in. Well, no, here's the thing is I I literally have been doing that and I've been trying to make it like really noticeable stuff so it'll pop up like I'll just walk around going like Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny. Like I'm just waiting <laughs> and then I realize I am walking around in a room that I have designated the phone room. Saying Bugs Bunny to no one. I have <laughs> lost my mind. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, this is uh, the world we live in now. Uh, I did try to do the same thing. I talked about UFC, about how much I want to learn about UFC to my phone uh, as a test. And uh, sadly, nothing came up. I did not get it any UFC results. You can tell when you're results. being sincere, Dom. It's not I, stupid. I think, I think because it heard me talk about how I don't like UFC before. It knew. It knew you were faking it out. It freaking knew. It balanced out. So so let me ask you this. For everyone, what would be the topic that you would feed your phone if you wanted to, like, make it clear, like, this is not a normal thing I talk about? Like, Hmm. mine would be um, ab crunches. (laughs) I think I'd look up uh, Most Valuable Primate, MVP, the movie, where the monkey plays hockey. (laughs) (laughs) I'd see that. (laughs) It's not that you don't talk about that movie all the time. No. I mean, and, you know, now we, we were just talking about that movie. So my phone is is learning my patterns, and it knows I love that movie now. Well, what is the uh, Goosebumps uh, book of this uh, of this concept? The phone that listened. The phone that, the phone that knew what you were Dude, ordering. The phone, and it, like, knows when kids, like, aren't doing their homework, when they're, or, like, when they're fake and sick. They're like, yo, we're going to play hockey tomorrow. And the phone picks it up and lets the parents know. Oh, dude, that's scary, fuck, that, one. fuck that fucking narc ass phone, it, dude. <laughs> dude, it just makes me think of Dream Phone, man. You know the the Cine Massacre, <laughs> oh. board James episode. That's Dream Phone, bro. That's dude, it. the Dream Phone, baby. The board, the board game Dream Phone. <laughs> If that I love secret, that episode. If that, I, I haven't seen the Cinemassacre episode of it, but like the board game itself, right? It was like a teenage girls call each other on a fake phone, and like a hunky boy boys. would say, like, "Hunky boys will call you." Yeah. Hunky yeah. boys, yeah. yeah. And so, like, so the con- the premise of like the episode spoiler spoiler alert 
<laughs> is they they like play the game and then like he puts the game up and then like he the the phone starts ringing and then he like looks at it takes the batteries out and then it it rings again and then he like answers the phone and he's like talking behind this voice uh-huh. uh and he just has this conversation he's trying to figure out who's in his house comes to find out like the phone is actually like the killer in his house killing what? people it's dude, yeah. it's bizarre oh okay Wait, you know that is really interesting you bring that up lucas because i you know i i do try out all board games as a board game connoisseur and i did pick up the new dream phone edition it was just called new edition for the, the young kids uh 2016 and i, oh I was playing, i was playing a little bit and there was weird stuff where like hunky james called me and he was like Hey, what's your social security number? And I was like, Oh, that's weird. I told, I mean, I told James my social security number because obviously I want to get them digits, but it was really weird. Right. Like that's a weird yeah, part it of the game. It doesn't have a headphone jack, which is strange. <laughs> it's just kind of like, <laughs> and then like the later he's like, Hey, just tell me all your sins. It's okay. Just tell me all your sins. Uh, really, really weird. I'll keep them, Wait, I'll keep them forever. You on the dream phone. No, it was James. It was hunky James. Oh, it was James. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, this is a <laughs> podcast about goosebumps. We should talk about goosebumps. Let's play, fact, let's we talk should talk about, about yeah. Monster Blood Two. Monster Blood Two, our first sequel, right? Our first sequel. This is the first, according to the Wikipedia, the first Goosebumps sequel. Yeah. So, mm. it, if this is your first time listening, this is where the actual show, where we talk about Goosebump books and make fun of them. Sometimes we just warn you about government NSA programs, mm-hmm. but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, this is our first sequel. Now, uh, now Luke, as uh, our guest and uh, someone who's told me is a bit of a Goosebumps TV show expert, how sure. familiar were you with the Monster Blood lore before we went into this? Oh, I, I didn't know anything about Monster Blood. I actually started watch. I watched the first episode, so I understood. What so you watched Monster Blood one. I did. Okay. I did. This is, it's, it picks up. You watched right Monster Blood first blood. The, right? Yes, <laughs> the, the, first, the first Monster Blood I did, and then I tried to. I tried to look up the audiobook for this one. Doesn't exist, by the way. Huh. And to to pick up on this, but I'll, I'll tell you this much. I don't, did any of you guys watch the episode as well? Like I did not. There is this, no Monster Blood 2, though. There, but there is Monster Blood 2. It's called More Monster Blood, right? I, is it? I, I, yeah. I could have sworn it was but it, the one where they're on the plane. So, yeah, More Monster Blood is apparently an amalgamation of Monster Blood stories. What? Yes. It's bad. Okay. It's the Monster Blood of Monster <laughs> Blood. Okay, I'm looking it up right now. It stars Kyle Labine, who I believe grows up to Evan be... Evan Ross. Evan Ross. That's okay. our boy, Evan Ross. So wait, the main the main character of Monster Blood. Well, okay, so mm-hmm. again, this is what we need to get into is understand this is a direct sequel to Monster Blood in such a way mm-hmm. that we all simultaneously went to the Wikipedia to make sure we weren't losing our goddamn minds cuz oh right. my god this book. Yeah. Like, I started it and I was like I need to make sure this is the same kid cuz it just jumps right in. This book jumps into dog vor in media res. In media res vor of <laughs> of of a boy going, "Oh no, the dog is eating the monster blood. I hope you know what this means. The dog is now eating me. This is really hot." <laughs> it it does a great job so uh, Luke, we like that. We have a couple. There's tropes, obviously, of goosebumps. This yeah, does t- take, teach me some. So this is a great example of the fake out end of chapter trope. The mm-hmm. best part is he double fakes you out. He does the first one and he says the dog's going to eat him. Oh, no, I was daydreaming so hard that I traveled into my mind and a dog was eating me. <laughs> and lost. Where he wasn't dreaming. He was daydreaming. He makes a note of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I like how the teacher's specified yeah that he was daydreaming yeah like he could have kicked them and been asleep and that would have, we would have been like okay he was dreaming that's I, fine yeah. i just like to think that he was like out loud <laughs> like saying things from the dream though like no i think he was no, Chad. no, no trigger don't don't eat me trigger oh no, my god where is it's, it it's so he, it's so yeah, wet Luke, pull up a quote because i think he was hold up hold up I, I yeah 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 no totally uh your uh the, 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 the monster blood is real yeah um mm-hmm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> I'm not a bone, Evan cried frantically. Trigger, I'm not a bone. <laughs> don't, bur- don't bury me, Trigger. Please, don't bury me. And then, <laughs> he, okay, please don't bury me, Evan murmured. He heard laughter. He raised his hand, he raised his head and glanced around and realized that he wasn't home in his backyard. He was sitting in his assigned seat in the third row near in Mr. Murphy's science class. 
and uh he's daydreaming well, yeah, yeah he says earth calling evan da 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 he says you i remember this specifically but he says you seem to have been somewhere in day in daydream land two See? nouns he would have said he was sleeping. This kid was fucking talking to himself. Crazy, <laughs> crazy Evan Ross talking but, to himself. But here's the thing, though. All right, so I had to go back and look at the plot of Monster Blood 1. Yes, at the end, the dog, like, gets big a little bit, and then it coughs it out, right? Like, that's the end yeah. of it. Right. Mm-hmm. This is strange because it's like the thing that he dream- dreamt as a nightmare never even happened. So right. I would assume this is a wish of his. Like it's a well. So then he has whoa. the second dream sequence that ends chapter two, which is him torturing a small animal, which turns out to be a daydream of well, his. Hold on, you need to explain. Yeah. You need to explain. This is a this is a big no no in stories. You can't fucking do this. You can't. This is go, crazy protagonist. You can't shit. snap I, out of a daydream <laughs> and go, oh, okay, everything's fine. And then he walks over and what? He throws a hamster. He so killed- the 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 the. Teacher yells at him. Mr. Murphy yells at him, and Mr. Murphy loves his his cuddles, which is the, his hamster, the class hamster. And he says, "You're gonna have to go take. You gotta clean his his cage after class." And in defiance, Evan throws him, throws cuddles out the window, <laughs> murders then, this man's his pet. And then, and then we learn in the next chapter that it's. Another it, fake out. It was a which, six feet under. It was a six feet under uh, daydream. <laughs> <laughs> this this uh, episode is like almost a screenplay for Scrubs, pretty much. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> but that that's so weird. Like it works so much better. Here's here's my thing. I think that works in in film or TV because the image of seeing it is funny. Like right. I was thinking of the the best version of this ever. I, I, it's so cool to reference this cool comedy movie. But in uh, uh, Super Bad, right? There's like uh-huh. a whole series of sequences of J- J- uh, whatever Jonah the, Hill. Jonah Hill imagining buying beer, and at one point his like neck gets cut by a cop, or then like that a, part's old, great. Yeah, old lady gives him money, and then goes like, "Have fun, fucking jewels." Like mm-hmm. it's funny because you're seeing things you'd never get to see. But just to read, oh, that last chapter didn't happen. You wasted your time. Right. You wasted your time. Good luck, you dumb idiot. It's also, so frustrating. You know what RL calls that? What's that? Is looky looky, you got spooky. <laughs> <laughs> it's the two fake out. <laughs> the double fake out. Now in all of in all of Goosebuds, have you guys seen or, you know, read something that has a has a dub, a double fake out? I don't think we've gotten a double fake out yet. I, we definitely haven't we've had, had a, a double twist. We've definitely had a double twist. But a, a simultaneous flashback into another flashback. That's Inception level. We have not touched it. This is breaking new grounds in story. Wow. It's, it's two. He had to step it up for Monster Blood too. I, 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 <laughs> I do want to call this out too. Is that I don't remember Evan being this annoying. Like I Evan, don't remember Evan being a shit. Like a little shit. Evan's <laughs> a little a little shit in this. Especially the the opening paragraph is. Evan screaming at his teacher that monster blood is real. And he the calls kid, him dumb. He, Dude, yeah, his, he pops off. His yeah, line he pops is, off at his teacher. His big line is, well, you're dumb. And then his teacher decides to be the same level of intelligence and says, quote, well, perhaps you're not familiar with the way things work here. Perhaps in your old school, the teachers liked it when you called them dumb. Wh- who even speaks like that? Like that's <laughs> right. So he's insulting his teacher. He's hearing the kids laugh. It's established that he says this all the time. That he talks he, about an adventure, and then no one believes him, and he goes, I don't know why no one likes me. He just moved to town, and the first thing he told people was that he had a can of monster <laughs> blood that made things grow large. First thing he told people about himself. You know, I, thought it, I, I thought it was really weird that at the end of class, uh, the teacher said, now, Evan, stay after class and then find me some dank puss. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that part? No. That, maybe it was only in know, my that, haunted book. I think you got the French version, dude. Ah, yeah, saying de, was, saying de yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't remember that. I remember when they were fighting very specifically, like when he brings up about the monster blood to, I don't know why, why does he bring this up even? Why? Like, why? why does it keep your head down kid? Like you dumb <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Dear God. Like the first interaction is to, to openly admitting something like really wild, like this crazy conspiracy. Right. Sci- right. And then the the way that the teacher like snaps back, he he says, you know, maybe a science fiction teacher would believe right. it, not a, a science brain. teacher, like or a science <laughs> fiction <laughs> teacher. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. burned his ass. Luke, he got when, roasted. When was the last time you read a R.L. Stein book? 
Oh my the, okay, real talk. The last time I ever read one and I only I only had ever read one before this. Uh-huh. And I recently just started like watching the uh, the show because the show I was like, "Oh my god, like this like this is the best worst show I've ever seen in my life." Yeah. There are some really incredible bad episodes. Yeah. Oh, so good. So and I think that's how I got on here, right? Cuz I was like tweeting about it and then Chad Chad tweeted at me like, "We summoned Yo. you." Yes. Some you, yes. And I was like, oh my God, get me, get me in on this. Goose- if you say Goosebuds three times on Twitter, we will summon <laughs> you to this show. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. No, but the, the one I, the one I read, uh, was, I, f- I don't remember the title, but it was about the kid who could fly. Like he read some book. Oh, I don't even know. Why am I, I learned learn to fly? I, I learned to fly. Yeah. I haven't had that one yet. Yeah. <laughs> How I learned to fly, and because I was like super into like uh, that's like that's like my biggest fantasy flying. Dream. Yeah, oh yeah, getting I'd into lo- some flying. Oh, dude, I would love to fly. Like if I had one super power, that would be it. So I kind of lived vicariously through that. It wasn't it wasn't so much like a spooky one as it was kind of like kid finds a magic book and teaches him how to fly, and he has to like train by like referencing the book. Uh, I'm, some, I mean, I, sometimes he likes to get magical. RL. Yeah, some some of the books are just kind of like not spooky, but just like really weird uh, fantasy concept, and I those mm. tend to be the weirder ones. Yeah, yeah, I, I I know what you mean, but I mean to answer your question, that was the only one that I've read before this one. I ask you that because you got a taste of the R.L. Stein humor right there, and it it keeps going. Throughout. Oh man, jovial Bob Stein, real real good. But and by the way, I will say I think this book. <laughs> counts as a fantasy book and not a horror because i've always wanted to just get real big oh yeah i just want to get like real inflated you know <laughs> just like real mm-hmm. real 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 big so puffed up like, like a big... conan barber <laughs> oh okay hold oh, on so, oh, so oh. conan barber right. <sighs> go ahead chad well just like i i when i first read conan barber i was like okay i get it you're being clever your character's name is like conan the barbarian and it was like some kids call him like conan the barbarian I'm like so you you came up with the idea first and then named the kid Right. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was and, like, he, and he, and he, he, I don't know how many names he went through, but um, <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to guess maybe it was two. <laughs> <laughs> was Conan a big popular name in the 90s? Like Jason and Brittany? Was that like a thing? He might have, he might have been watching a little Conan like late at night and maybe he was getting into well, him or something. Here's my thing. I don't think the writer of this, if it was RL on this one, uh, I feel like this was an RL one. This might have been an RL like one. This, you yeah. think Monster we have Bloods? a theory that there are ghost writers of these books, by the way. Oh, oh, interesting. And just I with the frequency it. of books and the tone of voice really changes between them. Uh, okay, okay. I can see, yeah, this is like Monster Bloods, one of the main ones. I can see RL comes back. But I don't think the writer of this book had ever seen Conan the Barbarian because everything he said, mm. he's, like, he's like Conan the Barbarian. He liked to live up to it. It's like, when did Conan pick up pick on kids by throwing hamst like picking up hamsters or tripping people conan was right. like a pretty solid dude who fought snake men and made love to women yeah if you murdered his family then he wanted to get back at you other than that he was cool i i think <laughs> i think the writer of this book said like i never want to watch conan because it's about a big muscular guy and i hate it so he just assumed <laughs> conan's like a mean dude I, I really like the detail that they say, you know, here's Conan Barber. He's a huge kid. He's much bigger than Evan. He's 12, but he looks about 20 years older. So there's a there's a kid who looks 32. 32. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a bit of a slouch and like bad back. Like that's that's yeah. a little he's, start, he's starting to have punch. like some uh, uh, some knee problems. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved if Conan if you'd found out that Conan Barber was like a narc who was there to like find oh my out, god find to find the monster blood, blood yeah, or dude. something like he's part of like the FBI. And he thought he thought the monster blood was a drug, like a euf- euphemism for like a drug. And he thought this kid Evan was coming in to like start selling some shit. Well, to this yeah, and, and yeah, I, I, I see, like our, we're it. already coming up with yeah. a better story because this is the core book, right? Is and we skipped to the idea that like mostly all we know is that Evan is the worst. Kids laugh at him because obviously he can't handle his shit. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and by the way, if his personality change had been a reflection over like I survived an attack from a witch who cursed monster blood and almost killed me a summer ago, I'm a bit of an asshole now. I would understand. But, well, here's the thing about Evan. We never saw him in book one. We never saw him in a social setting. He was at what his aunt's house. Or sure. His grandmother's sure. House. Yeah. So he was by himself on summer vacation. And the only person he dealt with was Andy, his friend, who we'll get to later. So we never really saw him in a social situation. We don't know how awkward this kid is. 
Okay, that's true. That's true. So maybe he's just always a dick. But like, all we know is that he is awkward around kids. He's not good mm-hmm. at social situations. I understand these are teenagers and kids, but whatever. But yeah. he, his main beef is that the teacher who has a reason to dislike him is like, please feed the hamster. And he's like, ah, gross. I hate yeah. hamsters. Who hates hamsters? They're adorable. Uh, there is a there is a fantasy that he has that chilled me. It was so dark. He couldn't decide who he hated more, Cuddles or Conan. He had a sudden picture of Cuddles stuffed inside a muffin tin being baked in an oven. That's, dude, he pictures killing this thing multiple what times throughout this book. He's even a little psychopath. That, even that lovely, lovely thought didn't cheer Evan up. What Evan's a, crazy. What a monster. Evan, Evan might be a sociopath. Because there's like a whole chapter where he just talks shit to the hamster, and the hamster just looks at him. Like... I thought they were going to do like, okay, I bet when he tries to feed the hamster, the hamster keeps biting him or like, I don't know, pisses on his shit. Like the hamster's actually pretty well behaved. <laughs> right. Like it's a I, pretty nice little animal. I have, I have a, I have a theory now. So what okay. if, what if, uh, what, what's his, what's his name? Evan. Evan. Yeah. Um, like, so he's, he's completely ineffected by the monster blood. What if his awfulness and like just inner demons make mm. him like the one to handle it. He's like the only oh, one. Oh my God. Like he's like, it's like his destined, like <laughs> his destiny is to handle the monster. He's blood. the true monster. Therefore oh, he can, it's his blood. Oh, so yes. he's the only one who can wield it. You're suggesting like a, like a Frodo type relationship with this monster blood where, <laughs> where he's the only one who can carry it and it weighs on his soul. You cannot oh. wield it. <laughs> what does he say? Yeah, that he pronounces that really interesting. But we wield it. You cannot <laughs> wield it. I, oh, but go. Oh, one, one thing I wanted to say about uh, Conan. Um, I because everyone was, you know, you guys were saying, oh, the, I don't think they had seen Conan the Barbarian. I know the casting director for the episode definitely didn't see Conan. Oh this, yeah, this kid was he was a chunky uh, little kid. Who was what? Who wore, who wore like he had cut off? I'm, I'm pretty sure he had like a jean vest that was like cut off sleeves. Good, good, good. Okay, good, so good, he was good, going. Good. They were going classic '90s boy. So he was like bebop and rock steady type. Yeah. Oh, oh, totally, totally. Okay. So okay. they were watching uh, Power, Power Rangers, and they were like, "All right, we're gonna use this costume right here." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, you see what Tommy's wearing? You're like, yeah, look, put it on Conan. Right. Uh, yeah, because Conan, Conan, and this is supposed to be. Like athletic, because the whole okay. So like, what happens? The the center of this story, the the creamy nougat of this story, mm. is uh, is mm. Conan uh, picking on him and and Evan having a bad time, pretty much just having a shitty like, like couple days, right? Dom, you said you liked the beginning of this. Yeah, I actually thought that it was well paced. I actually, I actually did enjoy that double fake out because both did times you? I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, because I was really confused. I knew, if, I knew it was a fake out, obviously, but like it was just such a we- like the first one was a good transition, and then the second one was just like out of nowhere crazy. Well, right. yeah. I, I, did, I did like the first half of this book because um, it like it's true to the original. Like um, he tries out for basketball because they play basketball in the first one, and then Andy's introduced. And, you know, he's moved to Atlanta and like I thought it was paced pretty well. Like the first half of this book is like really builds up to let monster blood come into play and screw things up. But that but doesn't here's the happen thing. Here's the way thing. later. Yeah. So that so that happens. The build up happens and they find the monster blood after he's had a real shitty day and everyone's picking on him and he kind of wants a little revenge. And Andy gets out the monster blood can to show it to him. And who's like, visiting? Who's She's visiting. Oh, okay, because hold on. It comes out of nowhere. That that is that part was real weird. So it's that's Super the most jarring, right? Aw- that's the most awkward. Like I have a theory about that. I Let's have a theory it. that this book was oh. written five chapters in, and then the author decided he needed to add Andy because uh, okay, like because right now it has a really awkward sentence. I'm gonna make sure I, I still have it pulled up. Uh, her introduction is just it's really ham fisted, just like exposition to explain to the reader and not Andy why they're there. Right. Like, uh-huh. uh, Let's hear it. Uh, sorry, let me find this real quick. Uh, there you go. Evan. And so Andy just pops up out of the locker and he's like, oh, you're here. He's like, yeah. She goes, quote, I told you in my last letter that my parents were sent overseas for a year. Andy said, giving Evan a playful shove. I told you they were sending me to Atlanta to live with my aunt and uncle. I told you I'd be living just three blocks away from you. I know, I know, Evan replied. That is so much like info dump when you could have just had 
Andy in the first chapter looks over it. They're in the same class together, like blah, 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 or whatever. They, yeah. they, they moved to the same towns or something. Like, it's just so weird to throw in a character mm. like that late. I, I honestly yeah, think like, he was. Nobody witnessed the monster blood thing in the first book. So why didn't they just have him go to school and try and talk about his summer? Why did he have to oh, move God, to another town? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Ugh. Ugh. Why change why change the setting at all? Just go go to their school. Just go right in. And, and and if nothing, like you have Andy there as someone you can confide. I get if you're alone in a new town and you can't have anyone to talk to. By having Andy there, like I'm okay. I'm probably could hang out with just you guys if we ever encountered a monster and no one ever believed us. Like I could probably keep my head down and we just like only talk about it at lunch. Yeah. So the the refrain for this uh, would be, you know, the saying, fool me once, shame on, on you. <laughs> monster fool, me, tw- monster fool me, me twice, twice. shame on me, on me. They need right. a third one for this one because both of these kids get triple fooled throughout. <laughs> they, get, they, get, <laughs> they, get, they, they get fooled a lot. They, it, I, I think I agree with you, Dom, in that it's, it is paced and that things happen, right? Like it at least moves through the book of... Thing, the first half. The first half, at least it gets through. Mm-hmm. And then it just becomes my pet hamster. Like, right. it, it's so it's so weird because it never made sense why Monster Blood showed back up. Like, I think they just were in such a hole where they had to just find a way. So here's what we knew last book, Andy, right? Yeah, are, you, are you, okay, you're going to explain how well, it happened. Yeah, right yeah just because it's, it's, it's bizarre and I, and I have, there's so many questions. The okay, end of last, the end of the last book is... All the monster blood was eaten by the dog or it all goes away and they can't find it. Like they're like, that's it. The monster blood, maybe it rolled away somewhere. We don't know. Blah, blah, like or Mm -hmm. whatever. Or a bat ate it. Whatever. Now this book is Andy shows up and instead of saying, I found the monster blood, it's I brought the can that's empty. She does have a good reason for it. In that she's giving it to him as proof so that he can show the kids sure. that it's real. Sure. Well, then that he makes do- sense. And then he doesn't. Yeah. Well, that's a whole other thing is that they don't get into proving everything to everyone. But then the can automatically magically starts to refill with monster blood. Again, because as Luke said, it is it is his blood and he is the summoner. He's the beckoner yes. of the monster. Yeah. Blood. <laughs> Anytime he gets pissed off, it just fills uh-huh. up. <laughs> yeah. but, but that is the an interesting. bastard as it's. As it's <laughs> <now>. <laughs> but that is an interesting concept because here's my first thought was, okay, we theoretically have a never ending supply of monster blood and monster blood right. also will just expand. Like the, the physics of monster blood is fascinating. I would love to run some experiments on monster blood. <laughs> <laughs> do do we think like let's say where the book should have gone was Evan going oh my god there's monster blood here's a can I know it works instead of trying to prank Conan or whatever let's show my teacher and let's like have a whole like expo let's bring in the press let's look right. at this I've discovered uh. a new endless fuel source we could probably burn monster blood in genius, cars, Jack, right? Genius, right? Yeah. Just burn it. You as could be gross. making Facebook advertisements about burning monster blood around the world in drones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have energy. dreamed of putting Full a little circle. bit of monster blood in your pee hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can. <laughs> <laughs> like, there just seems like there's a lot of applications that they use it for none of those. Because he is, he is a science teacher. He, spe- he, he would specifically have, yes. well, not. He's not a science fiction teacher. Well, Evan, did, did I, did I, science Evan. did I miss that step in the book? Because like the entire first half of the book is no one believes me. The monster blood's real. I would totally have bought it. He said I brought it to class to show to the teacher. Does that happen? You know, did I just miss that? As we're talking this out. I'm actually starting to understand the motivations really well, and I actually think they're pretty well laid out. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the motivations for him to get at Conan, for, so he wanted to get back at Conan. So, what the idea was that that Andy had was she was going to show him the can, and the can was going to be taken to class, and he was going to vindicate himself and be like, "It's real. I'm not a freak." But he sees the can, it starts filling up with blood. He gets scared at it. Okay, let's bury this shit. So, he, you know, natural kid reaction: bury it, get rid of it. Yeah, you bury know? it in the ground. Bury all your problems in the ground, guys. Conan sees yeah. it then steals it and they have to get it back, which leads to the most tense sequence of this book and was actually a good sequence when they break into his house. Yeah. They oh, yeah. do a little B&E and it's great. 
Yeah. Well, did you guys have the question at all when they buried in the ground? Like, that's not going to go well. Like, I immediately thought of like you're you're burying radioactive material, like, and it has reverse half life. It yes. goes the other way. And if you know that it expands mm. theoretically, let's say you bury it and no one digs it up, they're going to cut to like twenty years later. Evan lives his life. He has a small house like in that neighborhood, and then suddenly just monster blood boils up out of the world. The-, the world tree Yggdrasil is is <laughs> growing in the middle of town. Oh, I would like that way better than than using it on cuddles, man. That would have been dope. <laughs> we flash forward. There's and just then this was, giant, was, like, thought, like, that's your third tree. fake out. He yes. wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> Never, none of it was real. The sergeant tree that tells of all of Evan's terribleness. <laughs> so it's a little shop yeah, of horrors. He, come, he comes out and his lemon tree is really huge. Evan, <laughs> I know you God. stuck monster blood in your pee hole once. <laughs> I am that monster blood. <laughs> okay, okay, speak, okay, speaking of monster blood, for people listening, this stuff is green, right? Like yes. This, is, yeah. this is like green gack, like Nickelodeon slime. Yo, I think it's gack. I think he it's thought just gack. of... I think he liked. He thought Gak was weird. And he made a book about it. That is a he, weird '90s thing where we just said it. green slime is cool. There was a lot of green slime things in the '90s, especially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird little little heavy. It's super gross. By the way, I have a theory. I think they're going to try to sell Monster Blood at some point, like a toy. Yeah, because uh, like, so I'm going to I'm going to Google that real we, quick. We Keep jump going. forward a second. I'll establish also again. So Evans lost the hamster, and this whole thing is like now I'm going to start feeding monster blood to the hamster accidentally. It's getting bigger and bigger. Big surprise! It's on the cover. So there's no surprise to any of that. It's on the cover. Right. Like it won't, when, as soon as Evan eats the monster blood to restrain the hamster that's now like the size of a dog or a cow and is loose in the school, he eats it, and there's this exchange. He goes, "Let me write this. I write this down." Uh, don't eat too much, Andy cried, half covering her eyes as she watched him swallow another mouthful. And he <laughs> goes, uh, Evan swallowed and reached for another mouthful. It doesn't taste bad, he told her. A little kind lemony. lemony. <laughs> I think they were going to sell like monster blood jello. I think that was like a thing. That's well, kind of brilliant. I guess they couldn't sell mm-hmm. it as a toy because if they did, people would eat it and get sick, right? No, yeah. Right. Uh, I think it's like mm-hmm. a, jello, a jello product placement, like, like Ecto Cooler. Like, ooh, it's Monster Blood Jello pudding packs. And that just, would have been great. You know, I think they, uh, I don't know why they didn't do it, but like, why didn't they just sell the haunted mask as well? But then that, that brings up another question <laughs> is how much money do children have? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so good. That would have been like the best thing to sell that haunted mask. If they mask. sold it now, you would get so many people that would wear it oh. for Halloween. That'd oh, be a great, yeah. That'd be a great Oh, we should cash in on that, man. Dude. We should I, really. I wouldn't should. put. I wouldn't put that junk on, man. No, I know, like, right? Bump that crap. <laughs> uh, can, can we talk about something that I, I found so fascinating because it goes nowhere? The super awkward setups of the art sculpture in the school. So, yeah. Well, it ends up. Well, okay, it, well, hold on. Uh, yes, I, I have. I have a. I have a question about this because having watched a lot of the episodes, there's always there seems to be always a parent. Like not not like a parent as an apparently, but an adult figure right. who has some sort of hobby yep. <laughs> that ties in to a crucial plot point that happens at the very very end. It's perfect too because it's like it's it's the perfect way to hot quote unquote hide it from your audience because they're like look at boring parents with their boring <laughs> stuff, and then like you're like yeah I'm gonna ignore that it's stupid idiot, like and then. For- and yeah. then it comes back around, and you're like, ha, gotcha. Parents aren't boring, you fucking <laughs> dumb kid. <laughs> I guess we need parents. I guess I'll keep my parents around in case I get scared. <laughs> like, for example, have you guys ever seen Night of the is it the Living Bride? I don't know. The sloppy oh, if, one. If where... that's the third one, we haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, okay, we haven't gotten to okay. that. Okay, all right. I won't spoil it, but the, okay, the, that's the one. Does it does it have Bride in it? Where Probably. I the... think so, yeah. Like, not, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, Night of the Living Bride, maybe. Okay, okay, so something like that. All right, that hap- this same thing happens in that one if the book is is like okay. th- the same as the episode is. Bride okay. of the and Living it, Dummy, yes. Oh, that's it, Bride of the Living Dummy. And it's a, it's a father who makes birdhouses, so I'll just leave that up there. But, yeah, <laughs> go, go into, go into uh, this, <laughs> this one. All well, right, cool. Yeah, you're, well, well, Luke, what you're tapping in very acutely is one of our Goosebump rules – uh, tropes yes. is that the parents are always busy with a hobby that is that is keeping them out of dealing with their kids, and it either causes the problem or solves it. Yeah, yeah or it, it explains why no one's around. Yeah, yeah. So right, like, that's it. Okay, so, 
was this weird to you at all? Because it's a sad, and you, like, I think it's obvious where it's going as soon as he says, My father was working on an art sculpture of like a giant wheel. So you're right. like, okay, the hamster's mm. going to go in that wheel. Like, I, I think you that could That didn't click for me right away. Oh, really? I, I think I was just looking for hamster puns and ideas as soon as you get big. Uh huh. But is it mm. weird that the father had an art exhibit in a high school? Yes, I, I immediately questioned that. I was like, why is he having <laughs> art on display at the children's school? And it, I think it's a middle school. Yeah. So, yeah. So it would make sense if it was like a middle school kid or one of our main characters had done it and everyone made fun of him for it. And then the hamster came in. So this is a dad. This is the scenario, right? Like, uh, uh, knock, 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 knock. Oh, hello. Come in. I'm the principal. Y- yeah, I, um, I'm a father here. I would like to put up my art in your gymnasium. Well, uh, I guess we don't have any sports programs or anything going on. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, come on in. Shake yeah, hands. Oh, 90s is a very safe time for everyone. Be like, oh, you're Evan's dad. I'll call the whole school down to the auditorium <laughs> to look at your fucking wheel, man, because that's good. If someone was looking at the gymnasium and was like, you know what we need? We need just, we need some art. We need some, some metal. Sculpt. We need some burnished metal in here. Yeah. Uh, 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 like a cube? No, no. A wheel. This a wheel. Can, can someone no. make a, who can we commission to make a Any wheel? Any of the school kids? Hey, that Any freak Evan's kids? dad will do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I drive by his house all the time. Let's give him something to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, he's um, always making stuff. Get him, yeah. It's so Sp- weird to have a wheel, and then you're like, you're wanting to see that moment of the hamster goes in the wheel, and it's so <clears> great. <throat> Nothing. It doesn't happen. It's like Chekhov's gun, but Chekhov's wheel. Oh my and it doesn't, god! Yeah, it doesn't. But oh. the gun turns around yeah, and it shoots jammed. itself. The gun <laughs> shoots itself. They're also uh, uh, speaking of the gymnasium before the kids break and enter and steal the monster blood back. There is the basketball uh, scene. A a a a, a, a story uh, um, detail that is carried over from the first book. As I said, they play basketball in the first one. So Evan tries out for basketball in the second book. Mm -hmm. And at the basketball tryouts, we are also introduced to Conan's friend, uh, who is another big boy, athletic boy, (laughs) um, bully, um, whose, whose name is Biggie Malik. (laughs) <laughs> um, which made me think that he was also just like a 32 year old man, former mob tie guy who like in is hiding, in a yeah. witness protection yeah. program as a child in this middle school. <laughs> Biggie Malik. Well, do you think that's how they got Darth? You guys play um, Knights of the Old Republic, Darth Malik. You think that this guy, like, <laughs> he just read oh, this Goosebumps book. Malik did Goosebumps that a big book. plot where he wanted to, he does say he wants to exterminate the Force as if a great grain of expanding mass swallowed the galaxy. <laughs> so, well, uh, <laughs> there is kind of a, maybe the Force was used in some shape or form because um, Evan gets dunked. He does the basketball <laughs> child. It's like a twelve-year-old yeah. boy dunks <laughs> another boy, like a just on a regular a, basketball. With the strength of a thirty-two-year-old man. I didn't think about how weird that was. I was like, "That's that's normal." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Whoa!" He he just grabbed his waist, floated up to the rim, and <laughs> Wait, put him in. That's what happened. I I got. I thought he got dunked on. No, but he no. He gets. He is the dunk. Yeah, he, he it says. I ball. believe the words they use. So, is he's stuffed into the net. Yeah. So lit- literally, it's like when the Monstars came in to the gym in Space <laughs> yeah. Jam and put, and put Michael Jordan. That, that's what they did to that's Evan. That's what they did to that's Evan. That's what they did to Evan. Dear Mr. God, I thought they just said this little 12 year old kid like just went up and just like slammed on Evan. I was Luke, like, holy crap. I, Look, it's I, very yeah, detailed. They really, they, Mr. They, Mr. Murphy has to get a ladder out and yeah, get him they, out of it. I'm yeah. looking at this right now. This is very crazy. Also, just throwing this out there. Here's the quote. But to Evan's surprise, Conan let the ball bounce away. In one swift motion, he grabbed Evan by the waist, leapt high in the air, and stuffed Evan into the basket. So, and then he yells three points, which I would say might mean that he shot Evan from the three point line. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. That's a 10 out of 10 dunk. I don't care, man. That's That's worth three points for sure. Well, they they had, they had to get the kid who was reading the book to go, Oh man, monster blood is ass Evan. (laughs) So (laughs) that's what they were doing there. I mean, Conan's doing all of this like evil guy stuff because you're really looking forward to him getting his, his shit kicked in later. I do think that Conan, other than doing an awesome dunk, had some weird, like, old-timey ideas of what a bully did. Did you guys notice that? Like, 
early on. Well, he shook his, here's what I'm saying about yeah. the fool me once thing. He gets fooled by the, sh- the hard handshake three times. In this oh, throughout God, the book. Yeah. Kevin, you dumb idiot. Like, yeah. So it, that should have been a setup for something like he reached out his hand the third time. To sh- I knew he was going to shake my hand. I put monster blood in his hand and then engulfed yeah. him. Yeah. Like, well, but, like the third time should have been after he rescues him. He's like, yes. Gives him a real shake. And I'd have been like, okay, that was a nice setup. Now they're he friends. Him twice with it. Yeah. But th- here's a few things he does. When he bullies Evan, he at one point has the hamster before he gets big hostage and he goes, is this your hamster? And everyone's like laughing like, yeah, fuck that hamster, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, hey, if you want this hamster back, sing uh, Row, Row Your Boat. Yeah. And I would say, doesn't that make Conan lame? Like, wouldn't that make him? Yeah, like, be like, sing Green Day, dude. <laughs> yeah, sing, <laughs> sing, sing a public domain song, you little tweed. <laughs> <laughs> sing something from, like, the Music Man. Not that I like the Music Man. Just sing something from the Music Man, maybe. <laughs> And at one point, uh, he, like, raps Andy. He says he snapped his finger against Andy's nose before taking down the street, which I think is... like a real jerk move. Wait, but, that, yeah, that doesn't make any sense, though, because when they were sneaking into the house, it specifically said, and you know that I would remember this, that <laughs> uh, Conan was bumping some hardcore rap. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Why is he singing public domain songs? Here's my theory. That's, Here's my theory. Conan is a 45 year old narc explaining why he does all these really old fashioned like bullying <laughs> tactics. He's listening that explains, to that explains how he got to eat cake and ice cream for dinner. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> he can eat whatever he wants. Here's, here's my theory. R.L. Stein doesn't know one rap song, <laughs> <laughs> but he knows that Biggie is like Biggie was a yeah. rapper, right? Yeah. I'll just Big, throw that name in there. Kids love that name. Biggie Malik. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> That works. That would, no. I, I would love if there was a later Goosebump book that just revealed like RL's fear of minorities. It was like the guy <laughs> on the other side of the street that I had to cross to get away from. Like RL is, do you mean a, do you mean a black guy RL? Are you being racist right now? RL? <laughs> you know, he was a dark man. <laughs> you guys are just mixing my words. <laughs> Can you imagine RL Stein actually saying things like, no, I did not say that. that I think RL like might be a robot. Like the way I, that he writes dialogue, the way that you see him on the show, he has like no he has no personality, it doesn't seem like. Yeah, he's real like just he's a kind of a cold guy. I'm really excited for RL to sue us eventually. I can't wait for that to eventually, happen. Eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, as long as we can prove all these things are true, he can't sue us, so we're fine. Look, I, if I, we get sued to find out that he wrote all these books, if we get to go to court and, he, and we do the discovery process and find out that he actually did. I think it would be worth it. I think we're goddamn heroes. Mm, yeah. yeah. I do want to bring up, I think, Dom, this is a really good observation. I did not remember that in the first book he was also trying to do basketball stuff. Uh, so there's like an arc. Either just the writer didn't think about it and he just got lucky and did basketball again. I think, <laughs> I, I would hope, without remembering at all what Monster Blood 3 is, I would hope the third book is I eat monster blood so that I can be on the basketball team and I just dunk on everyone. Fuck, dude, that's what I thought at the oh. end. I was like, man, he should be doing this. He right? Should. This, is like, this is like some flubber, man. It really Yeah, is. use the yes. flubber. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so, put it on the shoes. Oh, all right, but go ahead. Well, no, you know, that's a great idea. He did put flub God, flubber could do everything, couldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, Flubber could, Flubber could dance. Flubber, Flubber could, could dance. dance. Flubber was sentient, but also okay being put on Robin Williams' shoes and then playing basketball. It could make cars fly. It, I mean, cars- it did everything. <laughs> yeah, how? I never thought about that. Why did Flubber do that? Yeah, well, just, we, might, we might need to watch Flubber. <laughs> 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 I like that a, a big part of going to see Flubber is that it was like the Cool Whip commercial. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you want? What, do you remember that cool whip? Cool it's cool like, it's a cool whip. <laughs> do you mean cool and it jerk? Was like, yeah, it was like CG, like cool whip, like dancing and stuff, I think. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Well, can we, no all right, one more thing in Flubber talk, because I thought this was, it sold me for a long time. Can we talk about how the, the other thing in Flubber was that Rob Williams invented intelligent AI in a floating <laughs> robot called Weibo uh, that was like in love with him? Like how crazy, oh, yeah. of, how crazy of a plot is that? Yeah. Weird. Well, I, I, it's kind of like how in Honey I Shrunk the ki- Kids, like he had all those amazing in, in, like inventions, and I was just like, this guy already did it. He's You're, good. He's, he's already good. Need to invent anymore. They're done, man. Stop. Weebo, Weebo, when Weebo gets destroyed by the men who break in, is the saddest thing in the world. They killed a life, 
And yeah. then you find out that Weibo's like, I made a program to have kids. We had kids, Robin Williams. Like, that's that, there's a lot of ethical implications in. Yeah, there's some deep, <laughs> some deep <laughs> themes this going AI on. I made kids with you without you knowing. That's that's heavy. Anyway, not was to that, go too far off the beam path here, but I do want to bring up Big Hero Six. You guys see Big Hero Six? <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Big Hero Six. I, I mean, it starts out with a kid who's like, I'm an inventor. Yeah. He invents. The thing he invents and debuts at the uh, invention convention mm-hmm. uh, is uh, the greatest thing man has ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean the nano? You mean the nanobot original thing? Yeah, but, like yeah. it could be anything, and you, can, it, you don't need. You, it just replicates itself and stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, like, but no also, one cares. Is that, is that well, how no, it everyone, goes? Everyone loves it. I mean, no spoilers. It starts off. You know, uh, the bad guy of the film steer, steals his invention. It's very like it stole it. That's not a huge spoiler, right. but. They're already like, I got to do something to prove why I can get into robotic school. He already created like a murder bot. Like that's already whatever. They're, they're all pretty cool. Big Hero 6 is, is, is great. Mm. But, like the second half of this book, though, is just. It's what hamster, you expect. It's what you think. It's what you saw blood. on the cover. A hamster got out of control. I would say everyone's reaction to it is not crazy. Well, at first, at first, they just think he's getting like fat this this hamster well we have we have to talk about the decision to use monster blood on cuddles because they know the implications of using monster blood and what it did just a couple months ago Uh (laughs) and they willingly go hey let's use monster blood and he's like okay Um, it's like no do you guys remember Fool me Fool once. Me twice. Fool me twice. <laughs> wait, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Uh, uh, God, what? What's his? What's his friend's name? I'm like drawing a blank. Andy. Andy. Okay, wasn't it Andy's idea? Wasn't Andy like we yeah, should well, do this? And he was like, No, 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 that's a bad idea. Because like, didn't you remember what happened? She's yeah, like, multiple times he says this. Yeah, and she's like, and then did, doesn't she do it behind his back? And then he, yeah, oh, she he, does. Well, she does. Well, yeah. he gets he gets dunked, and then he's like, I want to do it, and she's like, Okay. okay. Right. And, and then they get the monster blood back and then he's sick the next day and then she he comes in and, and, and she has already fed him. Yeah, and he's right. growing at that point. And then at that point he's just sort of like a carnival thing, like, oh, he's so weird looking, you know, like Yeah. And teacher's he, PO'd. You you fed him too much, uh right. Evan is is what he says. And it's like, yeah, dude, exactly. no, no, no. That's he's the size of a dog right. already. Like, come on. <laughs> so then he puts him on a leash and he ties him up. The next day is where shit goes down. And this thing is the size of the room. Yeah. So their solution to this problem, Cuddles ten feet is tall. I think is what it said, right? Ten, yeah. ten feet tall. That's right. So Cuddles is ten feet tall. It's like it grabs Conan and starts like tossing them between its hands, <laughs> and everyone's freaking out. So um, what do they do? They go and find the monster blood. It's overflowing out of a locker, and um, which no one solution, noticed in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, nobody noticed that. Um, but. Uh, their solution is that Evan will eat monster blood. Well, well, first he tries to use the wheel, Chekhov's wheel. Oh, that's it right. And it does nothing. Goes also, by the way, he had a really stupid thought. It wasn't even like, I'll keep it busy. He goes, I don't know. The wheel will like maybe help him lose weight or something. I'm like, are you kidding me, Evan? <laughs> oh, God. Are you kidding? Maybe he'll shrink back to his normal size. You're, Andy's a goddamn idiot. Like, it's, well, he says, he says that maybe it will distract him from destroying the school. Well, One. they said it after the, the losing weight thing, which I thought was like, yeah, you had it the first, you had it the second time, <laughs> right? You got there, you got there One, eventually. Evan. One, he's he's not attacking the school. Two. Every kid wants their school to be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually hates everyone there. It should have been like, go, my minion. It should have been like a carry, a carry moment where he just goes nuts on the place. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so they decide, they decide. I'll eat monster blood and I'll, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to <laughs> so, fight this monster. So the, he, he, he eats the monster. His blood. plan you- is to grow bigger than the 10 foot. He wants to grow so big that the hamster is as small as it was to him. But before it, ate the monster blood, which would mean he Ooh. would have to grow to be probably a hundred feet. He tall. would destroy the space school. size. He would space <laughs> size and destroy the school. So his plan is thermonuclear destruction of the school. <laughs> which I, um, I wish I like, God. but uh, I have, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Well, monster now. So, so he starts eating the monster blood. It tastes of lemony. He goes outside. He is, he is a small boy. He's small for his age. <laughs> he's so small that in basketball tryouts, his teacher tells him he's too small to play basketball and that he should come back when he grows but he's got a little heart, bit. Kid. 
So yeah, he's got heart. He's got heart. That's, and, a, that's uh, at least some nice foreshadowing, by the way. From a writing standpoint, that's at least I see what you're doing. That scene was well done. Yeah, yeah that yeah. scene yeah. was there for a reason. Yeah, so, so he eats the monster blood. He begins to grow. He's a small boy. He grows as tall as the hamster, which is right. 10 feet tall. So a small boy grows 10 feet tall <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. that boy is naked now <laughs> the clothes have burst <laughs> off of this boy so the ending of this book is a naked boy wrestling, wrestling a giant hamster. <laughs> oh god and dom, dom they have a kaiju battle within they have the a school kaiju battle where he gets pinned <laughs> he gets pinned by it oh yeah the, 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 the cuddles has weirdly like really solid hands they like latch on to stuff as a hand. I don't think hamsters can do that well. He has the strength of Conan in his hands. He has Conan hand strength. <laughs> <laughs> but the hamster's still overpowering. He's like, the hamster outweighs me. Like, how? How How did the hamster eat more than you? And, yeah. le- and less. This is the only way I could possibly, because I was bothered he, by the fact that he ate handful after handful. And I did want to bring, I did want to bring this up. And didn't get proportionally bigger. My only thought is maybe the potency of monster blood spreads out as it grows. Like, I a can full of it has a hundred particles of monster blood magic. Oh, and it becomes less powerful. And as it gets spread out, it gets like less potent uh, to eat more of it or something. I don't know. There's a lot of science I want to ask about. Yeah. I, th- mm. I find this interesting. If you go on the uh, Goosebumps wiki and you mm-hmm. go to the Cuddles the Hamster page, he has his own page because he's a, he's a character, you know? He, he's an iconic character in the franchise. I love He's on the that, cover. I love that they really, they really demonize this guy in his wikipedia page if you look here guys he's yeah they're giving him look at this look at this this job they did on this guy this fucking this uh what's the word i'm looking for here uh this hit job look at this hit job they're doing on cuddles (laughs) they're making it look like he's a fiend for this this is a goddamn political cartoon about he was He was forced into this. In this picture, Cuddles is a fucking maniac that there's, loves monster there's blood. There's two like dr- like drawings for a coloring book that says like I'm out of here, and he's like crunching a pencil like with a high five. He he's is got a huge muscle in his arm. This guy hates school, but <laughs> so, so this is what I ask because I don't remember this ever being a thing, and maybe it'll happen in book three. I don't think Cuddles is really that violent other than he tears apart the wheel. Like if they had said that monster blood makes you more aggressive, also bigger, it doesn't really. Cause like the dog, the dog even, is the same dog. Even in, yeah, right, the original book, right. the dog just is big and actually kind of helps them. And the nightmare, the dog is just trying to bury him. So it seems like Cuddles would just want to cuddle with you. Like it seems like he'd be real solid. Yeah. It's really him going up to a pacifist giant hamster and just punching the shit out of it. The naked boy naked. going up and wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> naked boy wrestling a hamster. Yeah, it, oh, it really oh, begs what the... are we going to do? This hamster's growing out of control. Oh, my God, a naked boy. <laughs> <laughs> a 10-foot-tall naked boy. He'll save us. <laughs> it really begs the question. Like The more, the more that I read it, <clears throat> I'm like, every single one of these conflicts... I'm like, Evan, homeboy, you instigated all of this. Like, you right. were, you were <laughs> literally the reason for all these people picking on you. I mean, maybe Conan, he was a douchebag to start out with. But, like, he – the whole – I remember reading just, like, how much he hated the teacher. And, like, he, we're going to destroy – make Cuddles so big because the teacher loves him. Right. And I and I despise the teachers. Like, no, dude, you popped off on the teacher first because <laughs> you were disrupting yeah. the class. You started this shit, dude. Yeah. Oh man, I'm, I'm looking at this. There's a lot of Goosebumps merchandise with Cuddles the Hamster. I forgot about this. This I, I think he was that, like, yeah. I think he was one of the main things. I don't know why this monster became like, this is the craziest idea of Goosebumps. Giant hamster. Maybe well, there was two big books, like two big identities in Goosebumps, or three: Haunted Mask, mm-hmm. uh, Night of the Living Dummy, and uh, Monster, Monster Blood. Blood. They I guess, all have sequels. I guess Cuddles is the mo- only marketable one because the first book is Goose Monster Blood going downstairs, and the third one is Giant Boyfoot. Yeah, so you really yeah. can't market like Giant Boyfoot. I think. I mean, I, th- I don't think you guys are too far off when you speculate that you know Monster Blood might have been a ploy to you know to make it a Jello or something like to further market the. I think it was going there. It's more weird about how much merchandise there was than than no like Monster Blood gack. That actually is kind of surprising. Yeah. Huh. It's weird. Huh. Uh, I'm looking at all these toys, and I I know they owned half of these cuddles things. 
I'm really did embarrassed you, that I walked around with shirts. Did you have the Cuddles shirts. pencil sharpener? I had the Cuddles pencil sharpener. I had the Cuddle. I had the Goosebumps bed sheets that had this. I had this is the best '90s thing. For I a had, thing that for a thing that hated school, he was on a lot of school merchandise. <laughs> That's true. That's really true. I wonder if like a teacher ever like took someone away from a kid. He's like, My but God. but teach. He loves learning, and then whatever. <laughs> like who saw like your Monster Blood like Cuddles folder and was like, oh. Monster Blood 2, when Cuddles eats that Monster Blood, it grows real big. <laughs> Best part of the book. Best part, Best of, part the of the book. book. <laughs> I, I wish the mer- merchandise had been Naked Boy Wrestling Hamster. I wish that <laughs> yeah. had been like... Okay, okay, so we didn't get to the best part of the ending yet, though, guys. Yes. Do it, do so it, So yes. they're naked wrestling, the boy and the, <laughs> and the hamster, and a popping noise happens, uh, and they shrink down, and Andy runs in with the can of Monster Blood and says, Evan! The expiration date was today. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the Curb Your Enthusiasm music starts. <laughs> yeah, and, they, the and, they're both, and they're both back to normal. I would assume that Evan is still naked because his clothes don't teleport They've been with him. Torn to shreds, yeah. Torn to shreds. He's hulked, right? His, mm-hmm. his pants are somewhere back in the hallway. Yeah. I, I don't mind the idea that the monster blood expired, but there's a lot of questions. Right. One, does the blood that was, like, there was, like, a hallway full of monster blood. Did that just, like evaporate to that rot and become like a, a hazard right. uh, uh is evan going to have gastrointestinal <clears throat> distress for a long time right mm-hmm. more Ugh. importantly this changes the canon of what monster blood is because okay because i, I had to look this up because i was so confused monster blood is a can that they buy in a toy store right yes and then it has the crazy twist tell me if i'm, if I'm wrong about this i had to look this up that at the end, there's the whole thing where you find out that, like the cat is a witch, right? And yes. like, so this is this is the description from the wiki. I had to look up to remember this. Uh, Catherine explains that 20 years ago, Sarah Beth cast a spell on her that made her a slave. She also made her deaf and refused to let her learn sign language. God, that book was fucking crazy. <laughs> Sarah Beth did not allow Catherine to have visitors. So when Evan showed up, Sarah Beth insisted she cast a spell on the monster blood to get rid of him. Catherine tells Sarah Beth that she is going to end the spell by letting the monster blood swallow her, thus ending Sarah Beth's hold on her. Sarah, blah, blah, blah. So Sarah, if I, if I read that right, if I remember right, Sarah right. Beth turns a pretty normal kid's toy into, into the thing. magic. Like there's no company that bottled evil monster blood. This implies that th- it was just evil monster blood. Well, in fact, they mm. buy another ca- Her parents at the end of the yes, book. Exactly. That's in the, the Jason, twist. in the Jason moment, uh, buy the second can and send it to her cause they needed that. And, uh, and then, Cuddles gets it again. So, so well, yeah. you guys are missing the part where she kickstarted a monster blood um, toy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's what she did. She, she crowdfunded it. it. Yeah, so she crowdfunded it, and she was like, "I have this dream to make this toy. Well, that, I want it to be freemium. I want everybody to have it." That that's the big <laughs> that's the big surprise based on whatever happens next with that. Because who knows what happens in Monster Blood Three? This just continues. Because it ends on like, oh, we got the can from Germany. I don't know why they picked right. Germany. It just sounds creepy, I guess. Uh, and they're like, oh, no, Cuddles, you're getting into the monster blood again. End book. Yep. If Cuddles gets big again, then the first book is bullshit. If Cuddles <laughs> right. eats the monster blood and just dies because a hamster can't eat Play-Doh, then it was just the first can. <laughs> monster That's a good blood, realistic. bro. Monster blood. I'm, unless Sarah Beth cast a spell... Or Catherine cast a spell that hit every can of monster blood in the world. <laughs> okay, about about this whole Sarah Beth thing, I'm I'm relatively lost. No, not relatively. I'm no, no, very lost. We always are too. <laughs> there was a witch out of nowhere in the first book that explained that monster blood was her magic curse. There was a witch MacGuffin at the end. Oh, uh, 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 is that that's another trope? I, I guess Which, like it's just a random thing that comes out of nowhere is definitely a trope. So some some witch says that monster blood is is there a curse? It, wait, how does that even make any it, sense? It'd be, it'd how be is that like a it'd be like this witch <laughs> saying like I see you, Luke, with uh, you have some silly putty over there, right? I yeah. really hate you. I'm gonna curse that silly putty so that if you ever eat it, in case you ever eat silly putty, which is a weird curse. Or if <laughs> like, you just, nah, man, just, just put it on some newspaper, you'll get big. Yeah, put it, put it on, a, on a Mary Worth comic strip. And put it on a couple of Ritz. Great. I'll eat those. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> or it'll just expand, but that's it. So I cursed your toy, basically. It's like a weird red herring. Okay, so someone someone curses my my toy and yeah. and, and making and makes it taste good and <laughs> also consumable. Made it taste good. And gives me superpowers. Right. And gives sound I don't know, it doesn't sound much like a curse to me. That sounds kind of like good a good deal. Yeah. Um, that sounds but this a, this sounds very sounds odd. Sounds like a real nice witch. Yeah. Real nice witch with a really complicated thing. I guess also then the spell would have had to say, whenever the expiration date of elasticity goes away, your spell will also stop. Or or just the writer didn't care. Right. <laughs> So okay, so the can all right, the can of monster blood is purchasable. It's a it's a product. Uh, supposedly, correct. unless here here's what I would I would say, maybe. Unless the parents do that thing that every parent does where they like hear a thing you like, but like right. get the name wrong, so they buy you transmorphers instead of transformers. Uh-huh, yep. If it was like a German like Munsterblut and it's just like a beer. I could I could go like oh we got the wrong thing oh oh sweet relief oh my god that was close <laughs> right well you don't you don't know how this is all gonna end okay there's a third monster blood book here you Snap. don't know what's gonna be revealed in that third monster all right yeah blood let's blood not book. jump to conclusions. I, I want to hear everyone's ideas for third monster blood book mine is they realize monster blood is an unlimited resource and Evan joins the high school basketball team and becomes a monster literally when he becomes so big. That not that he's going to crush the whole town, that his ego gets so huge, and then the NBA signs him, and he starts like not appreciating life, and it's kind of just like the whole career path of like the NBA 2K games. That's my book. <laughs> yes. Mine is that Monster Blood uh, no longer has magical properties, but they do find out the long term health implications of it were terrible, and uh, Evan has some serious problems and has to sue a witch. <laughs> I takes like him it. To, takes him to court. Takes a witch to court. It's basically Miracle on 34th Street, but with a witch. I yes. love it. That's great. Whoa. For Halloween. For Halloween. I like that one. Uh, Dom, Luke, you got anything? Uh, I'm still thinking, Dom. You got I'm, you got something? You know what? I'm just going to go off the top of my head here. Uh, uh, th- they decide... Evan decides to eat some monster blood again in the next book to <laughs> okay. join the, mo- the the basketball team. But this time, this is foreign monster blood. So it has different effects, and it only makes his heart grow. And uh, he's in the hospital, and he's like, boy, you're having chest problems because your heart is growing out of control. And uh, he confesses his love for Andy, and then his heart explodes in the hospital. He dies. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that's what I think that's what happens. No. I don't know. I like I that your ours right. went in health implication r- routes, Dom. Yeah, I th- I, we were on the same. Page oh, he's going to have back issues or something later in life. Like you don't, <laughs> you don't just grow magically. Like at the very least, they should have been after he's done growing. His skin had like stretch marks all. He just has over. the large bones. He's oh. everything else goes back. He's just got like striations all over his whole body. Like he looks like a monster from the thing. Yeah. Oh man. All right. I, all right, I just okay. Just off the top of my head, let's hear it. Um, uh, Evan and uh, Conan are now BFFs. Okay, mm. okay, from from the from the previous events, they're, they're hanging out. Uh, let's. I don't. Man, I don't even know how Monster Blood. It's got. It has to be. It would be so disappointing if it was not basketball related. All this build up, <laughs> two books. You know, building up to the to you know him being on the team, he's too small. Right. I mean, maybe like Monster Blood permanently. Like, yeah, I I I don't know. I'm I'm gonna Luke. rob off of some of Chad's because I really like That's the fine. whole. I, I I like I like the idea that he does get he gets arrogant. Like he would say even more arrogant. Yeah. Than, uh, than, <laughs> than Conan. he is already. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah oh, than he oh. is already. Oh okay. Here's here's <clears throat> a, here's the thing I'm gonna throw you away. He goes all the way to the NBA, right? And like, yes. and and he has a big rival, and it'll just be like uh, LeBron James. Uh, and and then at one point in the locker room, there'll be like a time where he walks in. And LeBron's like, "Hey, LeBron, I know we've had some some you know, difficulties. LeBron's still playing, right? I'm not that out of touch with the NBA. He's got monster blood, so yeah, yeah. monster blood. He's got monster blood <laughs> in the locker room. You see LeBron just forever, like just yeah. like chewing on monster blood. He's like, oh. and LeBron's like, you know about this too. And then like he brings him in to like the Illuminati of basketball players, and you find out that every NBA basketball player eats monster blood because there's no oh. way anyone could be that tall and big. <laughs> and it's like monster hey, blood right. conspiracy. Yeah, here's here's what we're doing ready book three my <laughs> idea the heart the heart thing book four conan he's been playing <clears throat> basketball he's he's gone on to 
um, NBA uh, the big college, show. and he's he's about to go into the NBA. Right. We find this Illuminati thing, and then we find like he moves a towel and he sees a can of monster <laughs> blood. He's like, "What?" And and uh, they go, "Yo, come into this back room." And he's like, "Okay." And he and he goes, "You can't eat the monster blood, or it makes your heart explode." And he's like, "Okay." And he goes, "This is how we do it. This is how we do it." And he takes down his pants and he like fingers his butthole with. My Monster blood. God. <laughs> no, you know, he grows a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. It's like the reverse of sticking he's like, alcohol. He's like, you got to do it for like several hours, but man, it's oh. worth it. And then it, Conan's watching and he's kind of in it, into it and he goes, slam, da, da, da. <laughs> I, I think... You know what I could really see happening? Like, I could just, I could just see this in, in an episode. Like... Okay, so what <laughs> you can if... see the butt fingering of no, 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 <laughs> not that, not that, not that. What I'm about to say, what I'm about to say, this this sounds like a very like goosebumps ish route, like not not being mm-hmm. like even more creative than them, but like like if R.L. Stein like wrote this um, or whoever wrote it, one of the ghostwriters or whatever. Uh-huh. I think let's say like he gets really really cocky. He consumes monster blood, let's say in smaller doses, and uses it for like basketball prowess and so he becomes really good on the basketball team gets super arrogant and then one of his friends uh maybe andy or conan uh probably andy because you know like girls rule type of thing yeah yeah, and gets like like you're a different person you're you've changed one one on one right now if i beat you no more monster blood for you we like we get rid of it and destroy it and then you know uh, Evan gets like schooled on the b ball court and embarrassed and is like, "Yeah, well, let's uh, let's be BFFs now. No more monster blood." And uh, I can. I see think what actually what happens is he takes more. He sticks more monster blood up his butt, like uh, way more than he should. <laughs> and he goes <laughs> again. He, he gets two and fingers. He gets naked and he goes, "Damn, yeah, wrestle me naked, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man. I You're love a this. man. I want to pitch oh, you God. monster blood six. At this point, right? This is like the Resident Evil like re- re-resurrection level of the story. Just needs has nowhere to go. Cut to apocalypse. Uh, uh, war war has changed, and <laughs> it's a battlefield. Whoa. And you see the American army, and they discovered monster blood, and they weaponized it. And a, an army of men, just super hot dudes, walk forward, and they're like, the other army is like, what is that? What do they have on their backs? And then they go, men grow, and these pumps just like auto pump. Monster Pump blood in, with, into their oh, butts, shit. and then they just get big and naked, and there's a like giant Titan men, and they stop over the battlefield. <laughs> this is like the Metal Gear Solid version. It's of Metal this. Gear. So instead of Metal Gear Rex, it's naked men with like monster blood tubes in their butt, and they just like decimate the other armies. That's it. That's where we go to. That's the end. End game of Monster Blood. <laughs> my, okay, my question is: so you guys have established, or it is it is known that. The the three most popular ones is the is the mask one, Monster Blood, and uh, like Slappy, right? Yeah, I would, I would yeah. argue those are the main ones. Yeah. All right. So, have we ever seen crossover things? Like, does Slappy ever get some Monster Blood, and he's like Night of the Living Giant uh, dummy? Like, that is a great idea. I think. I think. There's that. There's a new series of called like Hor- like Return to Horrorland, where it's just like the greatest hits. Yeah, Ooh. and I'm pretty sure I've seen a cover where like Slappy has monster blood coming out of his house. This is this is this is good. This is perfect. You want to bring this up? I want to say this is the start. This book is the start of the Goosebumps like cinematic universe. This right, is the their lore like, is being built. Whoa. The lore is being built. We we've encountered it a little bit in the Choose Your Own Adventure episodes we do, where like they'll just casually drop monster blood or like uh, mm-hmm. big O's or whatever that thing is called. The the giant O's. There's yeah. like these certain items that just kind of start popping up in other books. I think that series, which we should read at some point, if I'm right, is totally like all the best things are all running each other. Slappy's got monster blood. He's huge. And the haunted mask is on Slappy, too. It's terrible. Like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Right. I, hey, I keep re- keep on reading, man. Oh, read I'm, on. I'm going to read. I'm going to read along with you guys. This is and, the uh, Iron Man two of the universe, I guess. <laughs> this is where they knew they had something good. This is where they knew they had something. They kind of made a few missteps by <clears throat> casting Mickey Rourke. It was a great idea, but kind of a train wreck. Uh, <laughs> they'll do better. I loved it. It's, it's, Absolutely. It's pretty I feel, great. I feel, I feel like I missed out. I mean, like that I had to watch 
um, the the first Monster Blood. Like I didn't I didn't read the book. Also, uh, so talking about Andy and uh, Evan like getting together. I think the girl's name was also Andy in the show, but that makes uh, they. Sense. So they're on a plane the whole episode, and Monster Blood gets released into the plane, and what? You're, you guys, you, you're going, you are going to love how it's defeated. So instead of it's expired, look, it's on the can. So they literally, it, Monster Blood is stored, and they, the kids are coming back from camp, and they're like, "Oh, we all went to camp together," and they do the same thing as in the book where they reflect on the like the the first the first story about how he grew and so evan's on the plane talking to um i said like a clip show of are, are you saying this is, this is snakes on a plane but with monster blood Th- this this is monster blood on a plane not featuring samuel l jackson and what happens is they're talking to conan and conan's like yeah right, man. And he's he's being so loud and obnoxious that the uh, that the sky marshal shoots right. Him. The, oh, no, no, God, I wish <laughs> that uh, that the people I forget the the people on the plane like the who give you your drinks and stuff. What are, what are they called? Um, uh, stewardesses. Steward, yeah, Steward, yeah. Steward, Steward, stewardess is the stewardess is the yes yeah, sexist term. Sorry, Chad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Internet. The the <laughs> flight the flight attendants. Go be like, yo, Conan, can you chill, chill, bro? And then they tell him to sit down. And then so slowly monster blood starts seeping through the plane and it starts sucking people. It has a different quality. Then it doesn't it doesn't grow, but monster blood in it's a, this. It's the blob. Yeah, it's literally a blob. But how they get rid of everyone on the plane to like contextualize like, oh, the kids have to solve it. Everyone who's sitting as passengers gets sucked under their seat. Like, I don't know to where. What? A different dimension, <laughs> maybe like underneath the plane. Like, I don't know. But they're gone. In steerage. So, they're all in steerage. Yes. And so what they have to do, uh, they just got served their dinner. And they're like, if we throw monster blood, look. It's defeating it. So they throw their terrible airline food at Monster <laughs> what? Blood. It's a big airline <laughs> joke. Shut, shut, oh, shut up. I'm not kidding. They throw it at him. They're like, look, he can't take anymore. And he dissipates. This, this is a man at the height of his richness where he's like, I hate this food. I'll skewer it <laughs> on my show. He's like writing Monster <laughs> Blood like on the plane. He's like, God forsake this. At some point, Monster Blood goes like airline fees. Am I right? Why don't they just <laughs> build the plane out of the black box <laughs> yeah there's a there's a little uh, seinfeld moment at the end where he's doing stand up at no, the laugh factory or something but what the, what happens at the end is as soon as monster blood is defeated all the people get returned to their seats completely unaware that anything happened at all they just they of like if course they, if they were eating their food like they're eating like they're just eating their meal and it cuts to the pilot in the derpiest like close up ever as he says we'll be landing and da 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 but he says it n- way more lifelessly than that uh-huh. <laughs> and it it shows this beautiful depiction of like the sun setting playing this sort of like retro i don't know late 80s early 90s type of uh all is well music but it kind of has like it kind of has like a sentimental like sexual theme like feeling <laughs> to it and you're kind of like like yeah, like I'm dig- like I'm definitely digging this music, and then so Conan and this other character that I don't think was in the story, who was kind of this kid was kind of a super nerd who had everything wrong with him, like he was allergic to everything. Sure, and their BFFs. He's like he's like Conan's like come on man, I want you to meet my family. Like we're best friends now, but and Andy and Evan have this sort of like romantic payoff where. Uh, uh, Andy looks at Evan. She's like, "So, uh, if you want to call me sometime, it's it's totally cool." And I'm like, "Okay, Evan. All right, all right. Get, <laughs> get the digits. Let's go." Okay. And then, and then right, like right as all is well and everything's so good, you know, Andy mm-hmm. and Evan, they're gonna continue this this journey. He's like, "Oh, I forgot my jacket in the back of the plane." What? It's up? I I don't know. I don't know. So he doesn't board. He he's like. Right after he never gets off the plane like this conversation is had, you know, on the plane between yeah. Evan and Andy. So he goes, I forgot my jacket. He goes back to like one of the the closets in the plane that it, that he hung up. He hung up his jacket in, opens it 
And this is this is the cliffhanger. I don't even know what it was. It was so fast. It looked like it felt like three or four frames. It was like a bug. There was like a bug or or like a giant ant. What that was that was in the coat, uh, in the coat, and like leaped out at him or like put up his tentacles. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't green. I know for a fact it wasn't you're, monster. You bugs. know what you're describing? And this reference is going to be for no one. It's the, that indie movie that came out last year where the last shot is a guy opens the door and there's a giant spider in there. And everyone's like, the spider symbolizes hope. What? Does, was does it no a spider? It might've been a spider. It's like, no, there's like this indie movie that came out last year with like, uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal. Everyone sounds like I'm crazy right now. And, and like, it's a, it's an indie film at the very end. There's just a giant tarantula. And like the tarantula just wasn't there. It's insane. That's I weird. I have no idea what. Do that you know is, what I'm talking about? No, I have no idea. I have but to look it up. Someone, it's called Enemy. I think someone help me out here. Uh, you you know why that uh, music got a little sexual at the end there, right? No, why? Mm, set what? you up for that monster blood four, dude. Basketball <laughs> players finger in their buttholes. <laughs> <with> monster blood. <laughs> God. Gym shorts pulled down. There's a whole like fetish that was created because of this book. I feel like without a yeah. doubt, a gag fetish. Yeah, a gag yeah. fetish, man. Do I want to? All right, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while he's doing that, we should read some review. iTunes reviews. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Paul will just explain why we do such a thing. We like to go through and find uh, good reviews that uh, that people leave us that uh, make us happy. So we had a couple uh, five star reviews that we wanted to read. Yes, we do. Only uh, five star th- reviews. We don't read the lesser reviews. <laughs> Look, you're a guest. Why don't you have the the first honors? Okay. Uh, review from Two Spoon Five Star. Uh, Goosebuds is a fantastic, fun, and freaky podcast on the much beloved book series Goosebumps. Five body swapping serial killers. Out of five. Ooh, Thank I got you, like two spoons. some chills Wait, your on that. Voice. Yeah, yeah, your that voice. Nice. Yeah, your voice is Yeah. We should just hire you just to do that all the time. That do was... you Do you want to do a Facebook drone commercial? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> only if there is, you know, a ukulele indie pop background <laughs> music in it. I'm, you can also I'm produce it. <laughs> I would I would love to do that. No, to, to, to circle back to that, every time I hear the music, I always try to talk in the tonality that I think someone is about to to talk like the uh-huh. voiceover is about to come in so that that's what i do i well, didn't hear that podcast. i'd say you're a bit of a wordsmith a bit of a, uh, a performing artist so i think you got some skills that we don't so maybe we should just let you do this now for all time yeah, we're gonna bring <laughs> no. we're gonna bring you in yeah. to be the uh, five-star review reader I, <laughs> if you guys want me to do anything related to goose buds ever again Real talk, Aww. real talk. Let me know because Aww. I love all of you and I, I love goosebumps as well. Aww, so I love you too, man. This is a real know. nice time. My we heart is swelling too. and not just because of the monster blood in my system. Uh, <laughs> don't put it all the way in your system. Remember? Not all the way. Yeah. Uh, not all the way up the butt. Just a little way up. The <laughs> just butt. a little bit. Uh, here, I'll read, I'll read another review. I'm going to read, uh, uh, a review by Anon Ano that says three spooky, five, me, five stars goes, Every time I listen to this podcast, I have to buy new pants. I've soiled so many belongings at this point, I'm considering unsubscribing. Probs won't, though. I'm in it to win it, and you win every time with Goosebuds. Fuck yeah. Yeah, poop your pants. Well, we didn't, he didn't say that. He didn't say poop your pants. No, he didn't say what kind of soiling Oh, happened. yeah, there's a lot of different options there. <laughs> Soil it, all kinds of could have been all three. Could have been all three. Could have laughed so hard he spilled something. <laughs> oh man, there's a lot of options there. Nice, all four. Nice review. Nice review. Could have shot the uh, monster blood out of his butt. <laughs> yeah, he could have. Uh, yeah, he could have. I don't could want to elaborate have, uh, on yeah. that. I just want to say he could have. He could you have. guys have so many reviews, and a lot of these are so good. We got some great reviews. People well, are nice. And again, uh, you guys doing this it really helps out the show and uh, helps new people discover us and pops us up on the iTunes rating. So it's most appreciated. We love all of you guys for. For yeah. doing it. Almost at 300, which is great. Let's get there. Let's get, get there. Let's get there. Get us there. I got, um, one. I got one here by Dirty Walta. It says, Spooks and Sparks. Hey, you know what it is? The best show. I don't think that's how I meant to say that, but I'm saying it that way. <laughs> the best that's show ever. Hey, you know what it is? <laughs> the best show ever for young adult fiction criticism. You want a Hunger Game or Twilight? Get out of here. Only classic 90s books allowed. Also, John and Paul have great accents when they pronounce words with L's like shoulder and wolf, as I'll say. Shoulder? Shoulder. And I say woof. And wolf. I'll say wolf. wolf. I, say, I say milk. 
Do you say milk? Yeah, it's a Midwest. You're, kind of you're one of those. Like, Chad's one of those. Milk. Yeah, I'm one of those. Yeah, <laughs> milk. Uh, that's practically worth the price of admission, which is free. Hopefully, they cover R.L. Stein's autobiography that I did a book report on in fourth grade. He talks about being a poor writer and not being able to afford cheese on his bologna. <laughs> hmm. I love it. Okay. Okay. Wow. I love it. This is true. That one was uh, a, that one was all over the place and I loved it. Yeah. I've got uh, one here by uh Weird Health. Uh always a great time, five stars. And uh inspired by Luke, I will give a little bit of an inflection here. I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna do a little performance. Oh man, here. okay, okay. Ooh. <laughs> I've listened to these guys for a couple years now. They have many enjoyable projects online. I literally refresh. I literally refresh my podcast every day, hoping they've released new work. Much love, guys. Thank you for all you do. Wow, that was real. Steamy. American Whoa. Music Place. I think, his weird, <laughs> I think his weird health thing might have been that he had a poop compacted up his butt. And he was trying, to, <laughs> trying to get out. I Lost like that. Blood, I'll get it right out. Guys. There's a, there's a little right bit out. of like Max Payne, little noir yeah, esque yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, you know, that. it's really the way he wrote it. You know, that's what really inspired mm, it. Was, it was very nice. Mm. Uh, very nice. That, that's great. And by the way, uh, besides leaving a review, if you want to help uh, tell someone about the show, we have uh, a Twitter account. If you want to follow us on at Goosebuds Pod, we see you guys sharing the show with your friends. It means a lot to us. Uh, there's a ton of you out there. People like Kai the Lion, The Real Krabinski, Talk Bomb, Voltage Inside. Cobalt Wires, who did some amazing fan art of us recently. Yes. Uh, real, real adorable uh, shots of us falling into a book that I love. Uh, check I out just the Twitter recorded account. a video mas- message for him, and I compared him to a block of Colby cheese. <laughs> 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 the nicest of compliments. Uh, mm-hmm. Other people of you, like uh, at the root bowl. Uh, anyway, yeah, we love seeing you guys on Twitter. Uh, please check it out. Uh, Luke, tell people more where they can find you. I got to say, by the way, if you guys don't know Luke and listen to the show, he is an amazing... Uh, video content producer. I love all of your raps, dude. They're legitimately great. Uh, you should yes. go check out all this stuff. But where can they find you? Uh, thank you so much for saying that. You guys can find me on Twitter at Youngtown, and it's spelled without an O, so Y-U-N-G-T-O-W-N. Also on YouTube.com forward slash Youngtown, spelled in the same way. So, yeah. And we'll put some links to it in the uh, episode, too. Uh, uh, dude, Luke, thanks so much for being a part of this, man. I think that's, I think that's a solid episode. Oh, gosh. Thank you for having me on. I hope I don't make any bad reviews come up that say don't ever have Luke on again. I think like they're going to be flying in because they're going to want to be read by you in the future. So, yeah, you yeah. know, I'll, help me, I'll make oh. a request. If you want to get bonus points for your review, especially maybe a Luke review, uh, make it rhyme. Oh, get some, okay. get, some, get some get some syntax in there and stuff. Let's just say just throwing out the challenge. Just see what happens. Hey, you want to make your review a little spooky? Spook us. Maybe twist us at the end. Do what you want to do, man. <laughs> Go nuts. <laughs> you uh, want a fakey fakey? Wait, what is it? No, it was looky, spooky, looky, looky, looky. You, you got, got you got spooky. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Then. Yeah. Is that is that like a is that like a callback to Hook when Rufio oh, yeah. right before yes. he dies? Okay, and that is the just making Hook sure. Reference in a row on the series podcast. We're doing great. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, uh, you may have missed it last time. I'm just going to say this: um, Rufio died because an adult. Um, had a bad uh, relationship Peter Pan with was not, was not a good father. Yeah. <laughs> a magical Rufio pi- wouldn't have true. died if he was a good dad. A magical pirate boy who was the father to many other young boys died. Because of Rufio. Because of a bad man and his bad relationship. It's all right, guys. With his Dante son. Vasco uh, owns the rights to Rufio, I guess. So he's okay. That's the favorite <laughs> thing I've ever heard about him. Um, that gr- sucks. I was actually watching that movie today. It's it was pretty on solid. TV. Seriously, this has been the fifth episode in a row we've talked about Hook, I think. It's. Uh, Luke, you should go back. We uh, discovered the um, the cinematic universe <laughs> of Robin Williams. Wait, are we uh, stop? Yes. We, no, we stop recording, right? This We're not recording pretty- anymore. <laughs> no, we're going to close it out, but, but you got it. Oh, that's go. fine. <laughs> okay, my bad. My bad. No, no, let's keep <laughs> going. There's a cinematic fine. universe of Robin Williams. I'm just going to like rip off a long <laughs> fart real quick. Uh, <laughs> no. no, 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 no. You, you go back and watch the last step or listen to the last episode. Just watch it. Just it watch some Robin Williams movies. And yeah. See yeah. If they you talk to us. Together. We can't talk to you about it until you know. <laughs> oh, they all connect. They all They're connect. All connected, I, Luke. I, I think I know a little bit. What you, what do you guys, what you guys are talking about? But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, want to yeah, reveal yeah. it to you because the true joy of the cinematic universe is finding it for yourself. Well, 
speaking speaking of finding things out for yourself though have you so the last time i watched hook uh, outside of today like i watched about mm-hmm. 30 minutes of it when it was when it was on tv today mm-hmm. but the last time i watched it i had so many revelations that i had not realized before a word about yeah about the movie and just how i don't know if you guys consider it to I be a good it. movie or not but i think i i think i think i watched it recently and felt it was pretty cheese ball i'm with you luke the i like couple it years Okay, that's okay. That's okay. At least we can have a civil discussion about it. Because dear God, some <laughs> I'm people not about it. I'm not some, against it. Some people about their movies are just like they're they're so prone on just their opinions in general. But anyways, that's a, that's a different subject for a different time. So what I, what I had realized, right? And I don't know. You, this may be like an obvious thing that everybody put like connected. So amongst like the little cool, I top- realized that he's Peter Pan, which is nuts, <laughs> what, right? <laughs> Freaking Peter Pan. <laughs> So, like, this whole thing, so I really paid attention to, or at least I caught on to this whole thing about, like, the window, right? Like, he, he hates windows. All the, all the windows are closed at his house. Yeah. So on and so forth. Even the first shot of, of, that, of that very iconic window that he, has always, that he always flew into, uh, he sees it, and he sees it open, and, and he, like, he closes it. <clears throat> and so... Uh, um, amongst the other things, uh, how he like always stands, like he always stands like Peter Pan. Didn't catch that the multiple times I watched it before. Like he all, he always puts his hands on his hips when something perplexes him. He does uh-huh. the he does the Peter Pan stance. Um, another another the last thing that really that really like tugged at my heartstrings. And I just mean this may be super lame because it was like three in the morning and I was like <laughs> delirious and I was like yo. That's impactful, right? Other than the very last line that he says, and now that he's dead now, that's like, it's super sad, right? The whole life is the greatest adventure or whatever. Mm -hmm. But besides that, the, the, the whole fact that he climbs up the, uh, up, up the pipe or whatever to, to that window. And that's how he, the, the very last scene is how Peter Pan originally entered into that room every single time he visited Wendy so right. how that movie ended, I thought, was, like, very impactful. I was like, oh, my God, this is it. Like, he, like obviously, right, right, he is Peter Pan, but that's just, like, cherry on top. That's how he enters into that room through the same window. Of course, he says the line, always keep it open. But, like, once that connected, I was like, well, you know, that's good stuff. That's pretty, that's, Luke, Luke that's now that you stuff. have that. Take it and discover <laughs> the cinematic I'll, universe of Robin Williams. I will, I'll give I will you the, the next it. piece lands in uh, in Jack. Go to Jack. J- Jack is Jack the next, is next movie. Jack, uh, yeah. It lands in Jack. Does it end? It, it, it ends where? Uh, um, what's that movie called? The Hell One. Yes, right? it ends with what dreams may come. He dies and goes <laughs> to hell. <laughs> that's that's the that's well, an addendum. He dies, that's, in that's, that's, he dies in Jacob the Liar. He dies in Jacob the Liar. He go he goes to where what dreams may come. He comes back as the bison a man. man. man yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude! It, what? Actually, post Jack is is one hour photo is what happens after that. <laughs> okay. I forgot okay. about one hour photo. Okay. It ties it all together. Okay. It's so important. Uh, <laughs> next episode we'll cover. How Genie falls into all of this. Don't what? listen. It's about reincarnation. We'll get into it. Uh, it's an alternate timeline. I think we need to leave it there, yeah. uh, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out and talking about goosebumps. I love you all, Luke. Thanks so much for being a part of it. Uh, we'd love to have you back again in the future. Thank you, guys. Yes, definitely. Oh, yes, you right. guys rock. I love you all. All I right, bye everybody. Bye, bye, guys. Bye-bye. bye, bye. And we're done.